In this video, we're going to talk about how to go about factoring when a is greater than 1. Now, remember we have ax squared plus bx plus c for our standard form. So when I reference a, I'm talking about that number in front of x squared. And on the ones we had done previously, a was always 1. It was just 1x squared plus or minus something. So now our equations are going to look something more, or our expressions are going to look like 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Factoring, this is still our area, and we're looking for what two things multiply to give us that. And we'll do that by starting with our box. We still put our x squared term in that top left box, and our constant term done in the bottom box. Now when we're looking for factors, instead of just being able to say x times x gives us x squared, we have a 2x squared. So we know that one of those is a 1x and one of them is a 2x. And we can put those for now wherever we want. Now to get to 3, we know that our factors for 3 are 1 and 3. So I'm going to try to put a 1 here and a 3 here and see if that works. I'm going to have both of them be positive for now because I know my 3 is positive. So x times 1 is 1x and 3, now normally there was just an x here, but now it's a 2x. So 3 times 2x is 6x. Do these two terms now add to give me my, neg my positive 7? And they do. 6x plus x equals 7x. So that means I put that 1 and the 3 in the right place for the first try. That's great. That doesn't always happen. And sometimes we have to flip-flop them. So our binomials are 2x plus 1. That was our binomial on the top. And x plus 3. So that's how that one factors. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say we have 3x squared minus 7x minus 6. So I know I'm looking for what are the binomials that multiply to give me this. And I'll start with my box. I have my 3x squared and my minus 6. Now to get 3x squared, the only ways to multiply and get 3 are 1 and 3. So I'm going to have an x and a 3x. Now to get negative 6, it might be negative 1 and 6, or it might be negative 2 and 3. So I have a little bit more to try here. I'm going to try just to put a minus 1 and my plus 6 here and see what happens. So down in this bottom left I have 6 times 3x which is 18x and up here in the top I have negative 1 times x which is negative x. Okay that adds to give me a positive 17 so that's not my option. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to swap those two move their places. I'm going to put the minus 1 down here and the plus 6 up here. Now the minus 1 gets multiplied times the 3x, so I have a negative 3x. Up here on the top I have 6 times x, which is 6x. Those add to give me a positive 3x, which is also not right, and it's very different from what I had before, so you can see how swapping the place of those really does make a difference. So since those didn't work, I'm going to try the negative 2 and the 3. So I'm going to put my minus 2 here and my plus 3 here. I don't know where they go, so I'm just guessing here. So I have negative 2 times x is negative 2x, and 3 times 3x is 9x. Those two now do add to give me 7x, but I wanted it to be negative 7x. So the way I'm going to make that work is I'm going to see about swapping these signs. I'm going to make that a positive 2 and this a negative 3, which makes it negative 9x and positive 2x. Now it's going to add to give me the positive, I'm sorry, the negative 7 like I was wanting. So that's how that one works. I have a 3x plus 2 for my first binomial and an x minus 3 for my second binomial. Now on these, we haven't really talked about having a common factor, but for a lot of our problems, we actually have a common factor, so let's look at one of those. This problem says 2x squared plus 6x 
minus 8. Now the first step of all factoring is always to look for a common factor. We were just lucky in the other two that we didn't have them, so we didn't have to worry about it. But if we look at all three parts of this, we notice that they have a 2 in common. So I'm going to start by factoring out that 2. So I factor out the 2. I divide each of those by 2, so I get x squared plus 3x minus 4. So now I'm going to try to figure out what two binomials multiply to give me the x squared plus 3x minus 4. I'm going to leave the 2 in front because it's still important, but it's not going to be part of what I put into the box. So I have an x squared and a minus 4, and I want these two to add up to give me a positive 3x. Sometimes I like to write that out to the side just to remind me what I was looking for in that middle term. So I know to get x squared, I'm going to do x times x. And then to get negative 4, I have some options. I have a negative 1 and positive 4, or negative 2 and positive 2. And obviously the signs could be switched. So I'm going to try minus 1 and positive 4. So negative 1 times x is negative x. Positive 4 times x is 4x. Those add to give me positive 3x, which is what I was looking for. Great. So now I'm going to take those binomials and bring them over here. x minus 1 and x plus 4. You notice I kept my GCF up there in the front. I didn't lose him. And there's our final answer.